You're listening to Len So from The Science Scribe, and in this video we're going to look at speciation graphs for the different types of solutions found in NCA Level 3 Chemistry's aqueous system. The first example I'm going to look at is an ionic solution of calcium sulfate. It's non-acidic and it's also non-alkaline. My strategy to drawing any speciation graph is to start with my axes, and there will always be water present since these are going to be aqueous solutions. To make a solution of calcium sulfate, I first need to start with solid calcium sulfate and dissolve that in water. When that happens, I end up making one calcium 2 plus ion and one sulfate 2 minus ion. In other words, they form in a 1 to 1 ratio. In other words, they form in equal amounts and because of that they should also have the same concentration. Note that we don't include solids in our speciation graph. Now since these are aqueous solutions, it means that there will always be hydroxide and hydronium ions present. What's special in this case is that it's neutral, so my concentration of hydroxide to hydronium should be equal as well. I've deliberately shown them as two smaller bars because they each have very small concentrations of 10 to negative 7 moles per litre. I know that their concentrations are 10 to negative 7 moles per litre based on this formula that we need to know. Found in NCA level 2, required still in NCA level 3. In another example, let's look at calcium chloride this time. It's still an ionic solution that's not acidic and it's not alkaline. My starting point is still the same as before. To make a solution of calcium chloride, I still take solid calcium chloride and dissolve that in water. And you can see I end up with a 1 to 2 ratio where I form twice as much chloride ions compared to calcium 2 plus. In other words, my concentration of chloride is twice as much than calcium 2 plus. So I show that with a bar that's twice the height. Just like before though, I don't include solids. Now water is still my solvent, and exactly the same as before, it's still neutral, so my concentration of hydroxide to hydronium should be the same as well. All I'm going to do next is just tidy up my graph a little bit. In another example, let's say we would want to look at instead a strong acid. So my starting point needs to be the same in the sense I'm just going to draw my axes down that because this is an acid, the equation I'm going to use instead is a acid dissociating in water. So I'm going to take hydrochloric acid and add it to water in my equation as you can see there. It's a strong acid, so all of the hydrochloric acid gets used up. Because all the hydrochloric acid gets used up, I am not going to plot that on my speciation graph because instead all of it turns into hydronium plus and chloride minus ions. In other words, there's no more HCl particles present. My hydronium and chloride ions form in a 1 to 1 ratio, so they should have the same concentrations as well. Water is still my solvent. If this were a neutral solution, they should have the same concentrations. But it's pretty evident from my equation that because I'm forming hydronium ions, I have an acidic solution. In another strong acid example, we're going to look at sulfuric acid. My opening strategy is still the same. And it's still an acid, so I'm going to show an acid dissociating in water as my equation. What's different this time though is I have a 2 to 1 ratio going on because this is a diprotic acid. I have two hydronium ions for every one sulfate ion, so my concentration of hydronium is twice as much compared to sulfate. Water is still the solvent, so if it were neutral, my concentration of hydronium to hydroxide should be equal. However, again, from the equation, it's pretty evident that it's clearly acidic. So there is a lot of hydronium compared to hydroxide. Just at the end, tidy up your graph. What about a weak acid? The example I'm going to use is ethanoic acid, that's CH3COOH. Same opening strategy, it's still an acid, so I'm still going to write an equation for dissociation with water. You can see though, I am going to end up including my ethanoic acid in my speciation graph as well. The reason for that is because weak acids only partially dissociate. There will always be some of that weak acid left over. So some of that will be left in solution and as a species it's still going to be present so I need to add that to my graph as well. I can also see that I form one ethanoate ion and one hydronium ion in a one to one ratio. However, when I form my ethanoate and hydronium ions, I end up using a little bit of my original ethanoic acid. So I'm going to show that on my speciation graph, and you're going to see my ethanoic acid bar shrink a little bit as it's getting used up to make my ethanoate and hydronium ions. 
Now water is still my solvent. If it were neutral, my concentrations of hydronium to hydroxide should be equal. Now since I'm making hydronium ions while all acids make hydronium ions, the solution is not neutral, it's clearly acidic. It means that I should have more hydronium ions than hydroxide ions. Now the change here is that it's not going to be as dramatic as my strong acid. What if instead I had a strong base, say sodium hydroxide? Opening strategy stays the same. My equation this time is for a base, so I'm going to start with sodium hydroxide forming hydroxide and sodium plus ions. You can see that they form in a one-to-one -one ratio. Now I'm not going to include NaOH itself because all of it dissolves to form hydroxide and sodium plus. In other words, NaOH just by itself doesn't exist anymore. It's turned completely into Na plus and hydroxide ions. Now water is still my solvent, so I still have hydroxide and hydronium ions present. If it were neutral, same concentrations, but it's pretty evident that it's not neutral. It's basic because I'm forming hydroxide ions instead, so I should have more hydroxide ions than hydronium ions. In another strong base example, this time with calcium hydroxide, my opening strategy stays the same. Because it's a base, my equation is for a base. You can see this time though, that I make twice as many hydroxide ions compared to calcium 2 plus, so I get a double concentration of hydroxide compared to calcium 2 plus. Water is still my solvent. Just like before, I have more hydroxide than hydronium because this is an alkaline solution. What if instead I had a weak base, say ammonia, NH3? My opening strategy again stays the same. It's a base. This time though, for a weak base, I can show an equation in equilibrium with water. I'm going to end up including my ammonia because it's a weak species. I include it as a weak species because not all of that NH3 gets used up. Some of it is still going to exist when I make a solution of ammonia. When I make the solution of ammonia, I end up forming one ammonium ion for every one hydroxide ion. So they form in a one-to-one -one ratio. But when I form my ammonium and hydroxide ions, I end up using up some of my original ammonia. So on my right-hand side, you're going to see my ammonia bar is going to shrink a little bit while my ammonium and hydroxide is formed. Now water is still my solvent. This is an alkaline solution, so I should have more hydroxide ions than hydronium ions.